Hey, welcome back to another episode of What Are We Missing? We had a week off, but we back. I got Mr. 313 in the house. What up, Jay? What it do? What it do? What's going on, bro? How's your week? Man, it was good. Took our little spring break. <laughs> oh, yeah. What spring break for y'all, huh? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, Josh is having a boy, by the way. Just wanted to... <laughs> Say shout out to to Jay for having a boy. So Josh uh, and his wife's having a baby. So just wanted to congratulate you publicly, bro, on that. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> he's he go, he gonna be on the chosen ones network starting hey. August. <laughs> hey. He coming, bro. He coming. <laughs> he coming. Um, but yeah, for those that are listening and watching, and thank you for for hanging with us this episode. We got a real special uh, champion with us we got mr 30 ball we got 30 ball <laughs> brady we got i dropped 30 on a bad night we got mr Brez. <laughs> brady titus what up bro what's going on oh, what up what up <laughs> dog i was uh i was looking the other day at some of your scoring outputs this year bro Mm -hmm. and it's kind of insane i didn't read it to josh before we started because i wanted to see his like actual reaction so you had games of 44 (laughs) so 44 43 39 38 35 35 35 oh my god uh mm-hmm. what else bro uh 33 33 33 my <laughs> lord bro and 31 what <laughs> uh, i believe the i believe the 35 and 33 were in the semis in state finals right something like that uh yeah 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 yep so we'll get into the state That's finals in a minute crazy. but crazy <laughs> oh, you went, you went stupid, bro. Right. Like, yeah. Oh man, that's one of them. Oh six Kobe stretches. That's <laughs> man, for real, man, for real, bro. <laughs> um, I texted you a couple times this year. I'm like, bro, whatever you eating, bro, let me know, cause <laughs> it's working. Man, I don't even know what I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah, bro. So this is gonna be a celebratory episode. Like, man, celebrating that state championship, giving you your flowers because mm-hmm. I feel like you didn't get your flowers as much as you should have in your high school mm-hmm. career. Um, so we'll talk about that, and then really just talk about your future too. So, um, yeah. So Josh, take take that first question, bro. Um, you know, so just give us a a little bit of. Uh, you know, background about yourself, um, you know, how you grew up and everything. Um, grew up in Jenison, uh, born and raised, or excuse me, I was born in Muskegon and then I came here, uh, went to Jenison junior high. Yeah, I just play basketball every chance I get. So, and I go to Tri Unity and I'm a class of 2022. Yeah, man. State champ. Mm-hmm. What got you? What got you in the hoop, man? Um, it was really my mom, my mom for sure. Uh, just always seeing her and hearing her stories about basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what really got me into it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I know, I know your mom personally. I know she is uh, definitely intense, and I can tell she she loves you, bro, and your dad too. Your dad too. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're like my favorite people to like just read like Facebook statuses and stuff like that because like those scoring outputs you put on, they would just be talking junk, bro. Like you could tell they're just oh, like man. they're just like enjoying like the fruit of like your hard work and like the mess people talk about you and they just like bring it right back. So. Yeah. Talk about that, man. Talk about how fun like it is, you know, in your house and like your parents and um, yeah, all that. Oh, in my house, it's a little crazy in my house at times. It's a little crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's either me dribbling the basketball a lot around the house or 
just it's just loud in here but you know living here is it's it's a nice thing having all the support stuff uh mm -hmm. especially through my mom dad and sister all three of them uh just always pushing me to do what i do so yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> Yeah, and you got a little sister coming up too, man. Talk about her, how she's how she's doing, how she's developing. Man, she's she's gonna be nice. She's gonna be nice. Um, I will say, you know, she's going through a little phase that I went through. You know, like oh, I gotta go to the gym. You know, it may not be the what something I want to do, but once she gets through that, man, uh, watch out. She she's gonna be nice. She's gonna be nice. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. How old is she? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. All right. Up and coming. Yeah, she, up and coming. Yeah, she next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like I said off camera, um, but yeah, you started kinda like I did, um, at Genesis and um decided to uh go over to, to try Unity, which I thought was a, a great decision uh for your career. You had probably arguably the best career in Tri Unity history. Um and that's saying a lot, bro. There's there's so many players that, that played before um, you did. You know what I mean? Chris Kamen mm -hmm. being one of them that made it to the league. <laughs> yeah. You know <laughs> so, and a lot of players I, I, I played against um, when I was in high school that were very, very good too. So, um, so congrats on that state title, bro. So, I want to talk about that. That's really that yeah. thing. Thank you. Um, it's amazing. So, yeah, y'all are the champs, bro. So, talk about that, man. What that means to you personally to try unity to your family and everybody in your in your circle i mean to me it means a lot uh, i'm still finding ways to put it in words <laughs> just because it's been it's been a huge goal and a dream um but to me it just shows like you know if you put all the hours in and the extra time in you'll get the results yeah mm -hmm. uh, that's the biggest thing to me and then with try unity just probably the legacy the legacy with winning uh, you know pushing through whatever mm -hmm. doing what you're told to do in order to win uh, leaving that legacy and then with the family uh, I was talking to my dad about it earlier you know just they just couldn't be any more proud uh, all the support they've given me you know the lessons and everything so it means a lot to them yeah yeah absolutely man when did y'all when did y'all know that y'all had a chance to uh to bring it home like when you know you have like a state championship um squad um honestly at the end of last year when we lost that uh that finals game last year mm -hmm. i knew what it was gonna look like next year so that's when it really set in like okay now we really got a shot next year okay. so, yeah yeah, so, yeah go ahead bro Say it again. I said, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, since y'all, you said you knew since last year, like, did y'all put any, like, extra work in, like, during the summer? Did y'all, like, I guess just, just walk us through how it went down. Like, you and yeah, your teammates. Yeah, so, it was, it was something I didn't expect, really. Uh, I remember at first, you know, I was like, you know, we got a shot, but at the end of the day, I was always like, you know, this might have to come down to me. You know, I might I have a lot of pressure on me, you know. This is my season. I, that's what I've been told. So I was really expecting me to be the only one to just work all the extra time in the morning, at night, uh, every chance I could get. But turns out the seniors, a couple other seniors on my team, uh, decided to tag along with me and, you know, come in those early mornings, uh, those late nights and shoot around and get the extra work in. And then after that, the whole team, the whole team showed up and just started going at mm -hmm. it. Contagious, mm -hmm. bro. Contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you started that, but like for cats that are really trying to win, for teams that are really trying to win, that's that's what it takes, man. Like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've played on so many teams and seen so many teams that think that, okay, it's basketball season, so I'm just going to pick up a ball now and, and hoop. Mm -hmm. Like, that's <laughs> that's not going to cut it, man. That's not that's how it works. Not <laughs> cut it that's not how it works. Um, so yeah, that's amazing, bro. And that, like you said, the the work that you put in, um, you're gonna get rewarded in some way, shape, or form, and turn into a ring for you. So, um, mm -hmm. I love that, man. So, I read, bro, you scored 23 of the last 29 points after halftime. Was that 
Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, dog. So what was going through your mind at this point? So like start start at halftime, because I think you guys were down. And then what was yep. your what was your energy like and what was your team's energy like? So like kind of walk us through that. Um I just remember, you know, first of all, watching that kid hit the uh the buzzer beater three going into yeah. half. That was ooh, that hurt a little bit. Yeah. Um but I just remember going in there, you know, I realized myself that I really I wasn't being my typical self. You know, I wasn't controlling the game. Uh mm -hmm. I was a little squirrely, a little out of control. But, you know, I had to to lock in and tell myself, you know, like you've been here before. Right. This is your third time being here now, you know. Um you you came here to win and to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Um and I you know I was a little frustrated, so we got in the locker room. And I didn't see like one uh, facial expression of, you know, being discouraged, uh, any sadness. Uh, I saw I saw lots of hope in the in my teammates' eyes. Uh, if anything, you know, they built me up more uh, yeah. to just come out there and play my game. Absolutely, bro. Man. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it takes collective effort of, uh, you know, guys that really believe and, and think that they can do it. Yeah. Um, and like you said, I've been here before. Um, I'm glad you responded, mm -hmm. like, in the game. Like, when you still had time. Uh, but right. me, personally, me, man, like, I had that moment. I think, yeah, yeah, regional semis against Rockford. I had that moment. Um, but it, it was too late. It was too late. So now I'm kicking myself like, man, I wish I would have kicked it in gear and really tried to to like do what I did the whole entire year and play the way I play ball um but I didn't respond so I'm glad you you responded and got got a ring out of it so yeah yeah speak a little bit too um you know to that because like I feel like sometimes you know people they can like see it like what's happening, like what's like something might be slipping away or whatever, but they just don't have the, I don't know, like the, the courage or strength or whatever to like grab hold of the moment. Like, you know, how'd you like grab hold of the moment? You know, you, you realize it was like, all right, you know, we got to get it together, but how'd you grab hold of it? Um, I, ooh, that's a good question. So, so basically I had a thought of like, you know, kind of like what uh, Wes mentioned on his, uh, you know, I wish I did this or, you know, what if uh, yeah. that was a big thought going through my head. You know, I didn't want to the past two times I've been there. Uh, I wish I had the ball. I wish I took this shot. What if um, that was a big thought? And I, I didn't want to think about that. I didn't want to have that thought as, you know, this is my last game. What if I don't do this? What if I don't lead? You know, what if I don't take this shot? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's how I grabbed hold of the moment. I didn't want to think about I don't want to have any regrets after the game at, yeah. the, at all. Yo, mm -hmm. my last game, go out with a bang, win a championship, done deal. Bro. Man. Like Man. Like that. <laughs> Boss moves, bro. That's, <laughs> that's, that's amazing, man. Um, That's so amazing. And uh, that, that what if, bro, like, what if I would have did this? What if I would have did that? Like, it hurts, man. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Josh, I know you feel mm -hmm. it. Like, it, mm -hmm. it hurts. So, for you to just... Just lock in and be like, no, nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm choosing not to to have that happen to me. Like, you control what you can control, and you you went out yeah. there and, and, and yeah. did your thing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, bro. How? I think you talked about this already, but how is this team different? Um, because you've been to the Brez two times before this. How is this team different than any other team that you played on? at Try Unity. Um this team this team had a lot of grit. Mm -hmm. Um the, these the these guys actually, you know, wanted to work. Uh they saw how bad that I wanted it. Yeah. And they were like, you know, I can see it, you know, that you want it and you want to go out and win. And mm -hmm. they wanted to be a part of it. Right. Um another thing is not only did they know their role on the team but they also accepted it yeah 
And I think that's what made us go as far as we did, you know, winning the state is nobody's ego got in the way of winning. Mm. Mm. Uh, they all accepted their role, their position, what they had to do in order to help us as a team succeed. Absolutely. So I think that's what really set us apart from the other teams. Yeah. Yeah. What you said there is really underrated, bro. The uh, cats knew their role and they played it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's really hard to understand as a teenager. Because mm-hmm. um, most kids, you know, they really want to have their name, you know, in a there's there's no really no newspaper anymore but they want their name in a in an article or floating around buzzing around social media they want their video you know um their highlights right but yeah cats that know their role and play it shoot that's mm-hmm. an underrated that's an underrated trait man for real yeah yeah usually championship teams all got that you know it's like a it's, it's almost it's almost like a, a mandatory necessity you know for you yep. Uh, championship squad yeah for sure yeah you name all like the great teams um like you name a role player they they probably don't win a championship without like those one or two guys right so for you as as a leader um especially this year what was your approach as a leader like um with your teammates were you more of like a vocal guy are you more like an example guy uh talk about that um i'm sure you know this Mm-hmm. as good as anybody else you know with other people i don't talk i do yeah. not talk at all um mm-hmm. but my biggest thing is i would always lead by example but coming into this year i definitely realized that i had to be vocal uh my coach and i talked about it a lot a lot and a lot um but that was my approach this year as a leader you know i had to come in and talk to these guys talk to them you know Again, tell them I've been here, I've been through this, I've gone through this, you know, I know what it's like. So I had to tell them to do certain things and they would listen, thankfully. Um, but yeah, I had to be vocal. I had to, I had to step up and talk, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely as a senior, uh, definitely gotta kind of turn that up a, a notch. Um, so yeah, it sounds like you responded to that, which is good. And you talked about your coach too. Um, you know, just- just tell us a little bit about, about your coach. Obviously, he's a great coach. Um, you know, how did he impact you? Um, how did he make you better? All of that good stuff. Um, coach Keeler, um, I really couldn't ask for a better coach for high school. Um, he, he knew he, he knows what he's done. He knows what he does. Uh, he knows he knows <laughs> how to win. Um, but for him, he had a big impact on me uh, just by letting me be myself. Uh, always, you know, encouraging me, uh, giving me confidence. He let me play my game. And instead of seeing me as like an extra piece, you know, a new kid coming to the school, how am I going to use, you know, what he can do into my system? Uh, he, he figured out or made it seem like, you know, let's take this advantage that we have and use it together, like as a team, use it so we can win. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's five state titles for him. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that. I don't know what the record is, but he's got to be up there. Um, yeah, he's got to be for that. But uh, yeah, like he's coached so many great players, bro. From man, Chris Kamen to uh, the Voorhees brothers to. Um, Man. My guy John Visser, he was nice back in the day. Um, but who hey, who's the who's the who's the leading scorer in Triunity history though? <laughs> <laughs> My guy. B. So man, congratulations on a on a great career at Triunity, bro. Um, yeah, yeah, we're proud of Thank you. you. Um, so yeah, we want to give you you know your flowers, man. And uh, I've known how special you you were since. I met you, you were probably like eight or nine years old, um, cooking, cooking kids at, at the Jenison basketball camp. I'm like, yo, who's this dude? Um, got connected with your man. mom and yeah, yeah. Uh, then coached you, um, when you're in sixth grade and really just gave you the ball and told everybody to get out the way. Um, <laughs> literally for Josh, that was the, it was like LeBron in Cleveland 
Mike, Mike, Mike Brown. It was like, all right. <laughs> One for low. <well. laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. But um, so let's talk about that, bro. Being, you know, I know you've all always known what you're capable of. Your parents have always known what you're capable of. I think a select few in the city have always known what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. We feel like you've always been a player that's been just underrated, kind of overlooked. Um, so how has that really, you know, fueled you as a player throughout your high school career? Um, it just really, I mean, like you said, you know, I've always kind of been overlooked, you know, but I think going into my high school career, it, it taught me to just not, not only block it out, but just not like pay any attention to it. Cause you know, I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. I mean, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe what I can do, that's, that's your opinion. Um, yeah. it, it taught me to just leave other people's opinions alone. Like you don't got to get into it. That, that's their opinion, you know? Yeah. And if they, if they don't like how you play, if they don't, see you how others uh see you that's that's totally fine just keep yeah. playing your game and just keep being you mm -hmm. so that just drove me to just be myself man yeah. that's a fact like opinion oh. opinion yeah. yeah you know what is a you know what is a fact though i'll I, mm -hmm. I, I, i'll tell you what, what are some facts 45 44 38 38 35 35 30, 33 30. that's a fact Man. for real, <laughs> hey, for real. What, did, what did jay jay-z say uh men lie women lie numbers don't oh hey. yeah <laughs> hey bro yeah bro. man that's why well, you always gonna have always gonna have people that's gonna nitpick i mean lebron lebron got people who be saying negative stuff about them, like you know. Yeah. So you can't let that that stuff ever stop you. You know. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever feel like you know giving up or you know uh, did that those comments just like hit you you know in a way where you just it was like really down at some time? Yeah. Um. I wouldn't say like I necessarily wanted to give up, but I definitely wanted to step away from uh, mm -hmm. from a few situations. Uh, Definitely from from losing last year, uh, an example, you know, losing last year. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, went this far, went through all these games, all this intensity, you know, adversity and stuff like that, and just lost. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a situation I definitely want to step away from, but just knowing what I had next year, that played a big part, and I came back to it. Um, but, yeah, I've never really wanted to give up uh, playing basketball or being in the situations that I get into, but definitely step away from them because – I mean, some comments can hit. Mm -hmm. Some some comments and opinions can really hit, mm -hmm. uh, and a few of them did. But you know, I just had to tell myself, like, you know, hey, that's somebody else's opinion. I mean, you can either take it or leave it. Yep. Right. And whatever you choose to do with it is your choice. So mm -hmm. I chose to just block it out and just play my game. You know, add new things to my game and just keep hooping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. I think uh, stepping away, there's nothing wrong with stepping away. I think it's actually healthy to step away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody needs uh, to recharge their batteries. Um, so when me and Josh were in college, we had a coach um, that he was he was funny. Josh didn't like him. I won't name this guy. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were... Um, so we had lost in the playoffs um and then like we had like a week and a half or two weeks off or something like that um so i decided to do what you i stepped away i'm like all right just gonna recharge the batteries rest we've been at it since october you know what i mean um For that. <laughs> yeah basketball seasons are long man so yeah i'm gonna do other stuff um so we get back to open gym first day back and he was like, what you been doing? I said, chilling. I said, what? I said, what? <laughs> I was like, I've been, I've been chilling, man. He's like, what you mean chilling? Uh... Like, I mean, I took a break, man. Like, he's like, why? I said, because it's what people do. Like, after a long, you know, a long season. 
He's like, nah, right, nah. Right. I'm like, all right, like you, you didn't take breaks in college. He was like, no. Like looked at me right in my eyes, no. I was just like, uh, why? He was like, cause the other uh, other people getting better. I was like, bro, you lying to me. You're lying. Lying. You're lying to me. <laughs> it's all about balance, though. To, to me, it's all about balance and, and, yeah. and, and stepping away. Um, yeah, whenever you feel like overwhelmed or super stressed, even if it's like a day or two, man, like to kind of decompress, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, people's opinions and all those things. So why do you feel like, you know, you were overlooked as much as you have been with the facts that the, I mean, the, the point totals, the wins, I mean. It's a great question. Yeah. Um, I would probably say, and I probably say this in the most humble way possible, is just people were just, you know, upset or mad at the fact I was doing something that they did that they didn't want to see. Um, I was doing something, I was doing something right that they know somebody else could be doing or should be doing. And they were upset that I'm in that position and somebody else that they know is not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and just some people just didn't like the fact that you know i was myself i've just played a game of basketball um uh, i mean i could care less i mean <laughs> it look what happened I, I won the state i mean those opinions didn't matter to me at all yeah yeah yeah, yeah man like i could i could definitely definitely see that um like josh said like everybody has people that you know say negative things about them um especially when that person is doing things against the people that you know they they crown you know what i mean um mm -hmm. it, yep. it, yeah unfortunately it happens but like you said just opinions man and i appreciate the way you continue to grind um continue to grind out wins and score 30 40 you know what i mean um i, I just think it's incredible honestly i really do um, mm -hmm. you know a lot of teams would, would, would thank you probably yeah. crumble break um you know fall by the wayside quit but you elevated dog you elevated you know what i mean so yeah that's not normal bro that's not normal yeah it really is um really is. like i said you kept grinding you're one of the hardest, if not the hardest, working player that I know. Where do you get that work ethic from? Um, definitely, uh, definitely my parents. Uh, they're a big factor. Uh, just you know, hearing my mom, her stories, how she played, and then my dad played baseball whole life. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing how he, you know, worked all the time for that sport, but. Mm -hmm. I think just building that that self work ethic uh, yeah. is what really you know got me grinding the way I do. Um, just spending all those hours in the gym, whether it's by myself or with my team or coaches, uh, mm -hmm. just building that self work ethic. So yeah, that's that's what it was for me. Man, like Josh, yeah. for real, for real, Josh. When I say he. He's probably the hardest working player I know. Like it's, it's facts, bro. It's facts. Man, I believe it. I believe it. You can't, you can't have that many games, uh, 30, 40, like without work. People think that just, like it just happens. <laughs> yeah. And the way you play, the way you play, bro, you gotta be in incredible shape, dog, because like you're attacking the basket, uh, shooting mid-range pull-ups, like getting like vert off them mid-range, like bro. And yeah, so you just play so like aggressive and like yeah, you you gotta be in shape to play the way you play. Like yeah. it's not finesse at all. It's just straight, <laughs> straight power. Straight. I'm I'm getting <laughs> to the cup. You know. Um, 
it's fast it's up and down so um do you uh like pay attention to that like uh as far as like conditioning and, and things like that um on your own time or are you just naturally gifted in that in that area um i think it's a little bit of both you know just the way the way i'm built uh because mm-hmm. of my dad man, yeah boy, that boy was a unit <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, conditioning, uh, playing the way I play, knowing the type of player that I am and even watching, just, just watching other players, you know, wanting to play like them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, took that to heart. Had to take that serious. You know, if I want to play this way or be able to do this, I got to do this, do that, you know, do these things in order to be this way. Right. Right. Man. Um, Yeah. Give me like dapping your dad up. I, I could see what you talk about, bro. I'm like, yo, this this cat kind of strong, man. Uh, <laughs> what advice would you give eighth grade eighth grade Brady? What would you tell him? Um, man, I saw this question. And I think about it. Uh, probably going back, you know, circling back uh, to the opinions part. I remember, you know, eighth grade me would always listen to what other people have to say. Uh, especially being an eighth grader in junior high, you know, you always listen to things, always. Mm-hmm. You never know if it's true or not, uh, but you always listen and you always take it to heart. But I would go back and just tell myself, you know, just be yourself. I mean, who knows? I could be somewhere different. I could be somewhere else right now. Who knows? But I would definitely make a point to tell myself, you know, you don't got to listen to you know, all these other people's opinions. That's just mm-hmm. their thoughts. You have your thoughts, you know, stick to those, stick to the thoughts that you know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The only pains you need to, to care about are yourself and the ones that are really investing in your life. Like, yeah. Yep. That's it. Other people out yep. there aren't, they ain't paying your bills. They ain't, they ain't putting food on your table. They're not, you know, mm-hmm. helping you get to, to where you're going, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, that just goes for everybody out there, man. Like, not just yeah. hoopers, like people mm-hmm. in life, bro. Like, yeah. If 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 that person is not helping you put food on your table, is not helping you like get through life's lowest moments, is not helping you with anything, like their opinion should not matter, matter. at all. Not matter. Exactly. Message. All right, I'm done. Ran over. Preach. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, with your your next step, you're gonna be going to uh, Indiana Tech. Um, so, congrats on that. Yeah. Um, but what you. what makes Indiana Tech the school for you? What you know? Why is it a uh, that perfect fit? Um, really, I mean, not to you know, not to say other schools you know didn't you know see the potential in me, but. When I when I first got like a text and a call from them, uh, and then when I, even when I went on my visit, it was just a sense of knowing that this school, this program, sees the value and potential in me, and that that was huge for me because I mean they're the first school that offered me a full ride. Wow! I mean, if that doesn't say something, then I don't know. Yeah. But just knowing that you know they see the value in me and see the potential that. I have and the things that I can do to help their program, that that's what made it the school for me. First school to offer you, man. That's that's what's up. Um, and that really showed that they they definitely cared about you. They really wanted you. So right, and that's the key. That's definitely the key. You definitely um, go somewhere that wants you there. Yeah. So let's go a little bit deeper. Um, when you think about a program, when you think about a school. Uh, so what, when you make, make major decision or like when you started like weighing things out, what were some important things like on your checklist that you're looking for? Um, definitely, you know, am I going to succeed getting my education first and foremost, definitely doing that or thinking about that. Um, but outside of that, you know, just am I going to help this program do what they know how to do when that program knows how to win. Mm. I mean, they know how to win. Coach Albert knows how to win. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, am I, am I going to impact? How am I going to impact this uh, this program? Am I going to help them win, or am I going to just be another player? Yeah. Um, another thing is, you know, am I going to be valued the way that I should be as a player? Mm. Am I going to grow as a person, whether that that's on or off the court? Um, another thing, another big thing is just, you know, is my family, are they going to be satisfied? Are they going to be happy that I'm going here? Uh, are they going to be able to support me through it all? Absolutely. So. That's, yeah, that's some real mature uh, answers right there. I like, I like what I heard for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. What was uh, some of the tough things, you know, about the recruiting process? um rumors ooh, rumors uh especially in my junior year going back to that a little bit um i was at a few camps uh around the grand rapids area and some rumors spread that you know i was only looking to go d1 i was only looking for this and that when really i was just trying to play college ball i yeah. mean that was i think that was the toughest part uh people saying things that really aren't true or that weren't said you know out of my mouth yeah uh that, that's what that's what the struggle was for my recruiting yeah that's hard bro did you feel like you had to like clear the air um or did you do that at all or? going back to the prep hoops uh expo camp mm-hmm. um that's when it really started uh a big one was about i just wanted to go d1 yeah um, so I felt like, you know, after that camp, I had to clear the air. Mm. Uh, so I went on Twitter and I was like, you know, that this was never said, never yeah. came out of my mouth. Uh, nobody in my family members said it. So it's not true. Mm-hmm. You know, don't believe what you hear. Um, and then that's oddly enough when uh, tech came calling. So when they saw that, yeah. they jumped on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Glad you said something. Yeah, for real. Close mouths don't get fed, you know. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> so, what? There's a you know a saying out there. A lot of people believe it's like D one or bust. What do you have to say to to players that believe that? That that's not true. That mm. I don't I don't believe in that at all. I mean, whether you go D one, D two, D three, JUCO, NAIA, you you play you playing some type of college ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you playing, you, you playing with future, with future NBA athletes. Yeah. Whether not even NBA, you playing with future athletes that can go overseas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah. At all. No, I don't either, bro. It's not. It's it, not. Don't, it don't matter at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I learned one day, um, Josh, I don't know if you remember, bro, cat, the cat that played we played against at the Y who played like James Harden he was a lefty yes yes bro yeah like Brady dude was cooking me bro like it was barbecue chicken man like I (laughs) he had the wildest hezzy ever bro like it was just like he would just like rise up just ever so slightly and I'd jumped every time or like rose up every time and went right by me if i didn't rise he would shoot it i'm like yo i can't guard this man i was like gosh <laughs> i was like you gotta guard him man like cooking us bro we ended up winning the game but i was just like yo i went up to him like i was like man respect bro like where'd you play at bro he was like olivet i was like what olivet <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> at the time i'm like we were fresh out of college i'm like 20 22 maybe 23 um but looking back on it it's just like man it don't matter where you play bro like as long as you get that opportunity you get that opportunity you got a gym that you got access to you got weights you got access to Mm -hmm. at that point is your choice how much work you want to put in you know what i mean so yeah Yeah. i'm guessing that's what that dude did and he just (laughs) became nice (laughs) yeah yeah for real, because it's sometimes you know a lot of times too. It's not even, you know. Obviously, you know when you start talking about like the Dukes and North Carolinas and all of that, like that's a different level, you know. But 
a lot of times, like, the only reason schools are D1 is not based off of talent. It's based off of the money that athletic departments exactly. want to invest into the athletic program. So, I mean, right. you can go to a D1 school, right. but y'all might suck, right? you know? And a D2 exactly. school can be a million times better than them. Or D3 school, you know? Or NAIA school, you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's a real big misconception that D1 right. means the best. Exactly. Everybody wants to go D1 because they want to be St. Peter's. Yeah, but right. <laughs> there's hundreds of other yep. teams that hundreds of other teams that went four and thirty mm-hmm. and got blown out by seventy by Kentucky. That yes. didn't even that didn't even sniff the tournament. You know what I mean? So it's like what do you want? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like I got, I was getting recruited by some like smaller D ones, but I'm just like, do I want to go D two and be competitive and like potentially make the tournament every year and win most of our games or go to a small D one and just get, you know, beat like mm-hmm. a drum. So um, I don't, I don't want to like discourage the kids that are like, you know, are like mid majors uh, recruits, uh-huh. but it's not D one or bust. That's all. That's all. Yeah. 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 So yeah, continue to talk about India, Indiana Tech. Um, you got any majors in mind? Um, being a entrepreneur, business management, that Ooh. type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got any? Uh... Trying to do something with clothes a little bit, a little clothing oh, okay. line. I don't know something for the something for the future, you know. It's yeah, right. I got right. you. I got you. Let us know, man. Whenever you got something popping, yeah. You know, shout out, Big Nick. You know what I mean? So, hey. Um, speaking of Big Nick, man, Nikki Tompkins. What what has she been to you, man? These you know past few years uh, in your career. Oh, uh, I couldn't say enough good things about her. Um, I just remember, you know, when, when she first started coaching me, uh, it, it was, I could tell it was going to be, you know, a good person to have, you know, not only as being my coach, but uh, being a person I can have in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, she taught me a lot, definitely kind of with, you know, just being yourself, mm-hmm. you know, do what you do. Like, why pass the ball when you know you can take somebody to the rack? Right. Just th- those type of things and those type of situations uh, just teaching me to, you know, push through anything. And if you really work, if you really work and you want and you want something out of it and you put all that time in, the results will come. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want will be yours. Yeah. And that's a big thing that she really taught me and I had to grasp onto. Yeah, bro. Those are yeah. all facts. She a legend. She is a legend, man. <laughs> she is a straight man. legend. <laughs> Great legend, someone that, someone that we respect like so much. Um, yeah, so it's like whenever, whenever we see her, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So shout out to Nikki, she's starting her own AAU squad. So, um, yeah, hopefully she gets some success with that, which we know she will. Um, yeah. No, know, knowing her, so yeah, man. Um. You want to hit these quick hitters, Josh, real quick? Let's get them. All right. I'm going to ask you the first one, all right? So, uh, favorite basketball player of all time? <laughs> hey, man. Ooh. I mean, it's really between three people. I mean, it's either Mike, Kobe, or Iverson. I mean, mm. that's, that's my, that's my, my time, uh, my list. Uh, that's Iverson. Nice. That's just, nice just ass. watch how he, just watch, just watch how he played and just how, yeah. how he just shook everybody. Yeah. He lived it. And then, <laughs> yeah. With how Mike played, of course, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, man has rings after rings. And then just Kobe's mental game. Just how throughout how he played, just mentally how that's something I'll never I'll never forget. That's something I always like, you know, think about. Mm. Yeah, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely, definitely good list. I saw a clip uh, of Mike. You might have saw it on uh, the last dance when Amar Rashad asked him before he's about to go golfing. He was like, uh, a couple seconds left. Oh, tie, yeah. tie game or whatever. Who's taking the last shot? He was like, me. <laughs> me. It's yep, a dumb yep. question. <laughs> 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 so Mike, Mike is like underratedly funny, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. After watching that little last dance, I would. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, that last. I feel like the last dance, bro, saved the world. Like, <laughs> oh, it did. I yeah. really think it did, bro. Like, it was like at the height of the pandemic. Oh, nobody was doing nothing. Nothing. No, like nobody. Everybody was going crazy, but then, what was it? Five parts? I think so. Five, mm-hmm. five yeah. parts. Five. I can't yeah. remember. All I, all I remember, I was hungry for it, bro. Was- every <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> every Sunday night. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, yes. uh, it, 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 I I'm convinced it, it saved the world, bro. Because like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then even even after after it was done people were still talking about it for like yeah. the entire summer oh, almost yeah. the entire year so yeah. man Mike strikes good. again yeah bro <laughs> it, was, it was incredible but um LeBron's a go still but uh bro. if you had if you had to <laughs> uh next question though if you could go like back in time to any sports event um, to see it live in person, like courtside or whatever, where would you, which one would you go to? Ooh, Mike hitting that last shot. In uh, Utah? Yep, yep, yeah. yep, Mike hitting that last shot. <sighs> yeah, yeah, bro. I remember, again, watching the last dance, just watching mm-hmm. that clip over and over and over. Like, mm-hmm. if I could be there, I'd be going crazy. I'd, man. Just, just like everybody else, man, I'd go crazy. Yeah, yeah man. Yo, I was like what, eight years old when that came when that was when that happened. But I remember the shot, um, and I remember like seeing it on Sports Center the day after, like over and over, and just like wanting to go outside and like mimic it myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so yeah, that's a great moment, bro. That's a great that's, moment. It's a classic. Um, what's your favorite shooter hooping? Ooh, um, Wes, I don't know if you remember these, but I had the uh, the D Rose 4.5s. I think it was mm. they were. I think they were. Never had yeah, a pair yeah, of D yeah. Roses. I yeah. never either. Uh, they, look, they, uh, they had like a little zebra print on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the D Rose 4.5s. Those, those were the shoes for me. Yeah, okay. yeah. I remember those, man. Um, yeah, I never had D Roses. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of like allergic to adidas basketball shoes because <laughs> we wore them at grand valley <laughs> so, uh, I feel, okay, okay. You know what I mean? so now we're, now we're just like nike or bust like nah, that's it that's it yeah and they ain't never gonna catch me hooping in adidas <laughs> ever you can't do it i do remember yeah. those though but i can't do it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> All right, bro. Last question. Um, and you have to help us with your answer. So, who should we have on the show next? Um, I would probably have to say my boy Mason Woods from East Lansing. Oh, yeah, I met him. I met him. Yeah, yep. Okay. Uh, he, he's a character. He's he's a good one. I ain't gonna lie. He's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dope, man. Dope. Um, dog. Great interview, man. Um, I've always, you know, just loved you as a player and as a person, bro. So, I'm just real. I can't believe you you graduating, man. Like that's crazy. But um, <laughs> yeah, proud of you, man. It's a lot to take. From me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, enjoy these last few few months of your senior year, bro. Um, 
I know you're gonna have fun. So, mm -hmm. are you? Uh, I know you used to play baseball. Are you? Are you gonna play baseball this year or? Yep, I'm finishing that out this year. Last year that too. So. Okay. Yeah. That's Why good, not? Man. That's good. Yeah, that's that is good. good. Yeah. That's good. So yeah, enjoy that, man, and um, yeah, congrats again on the state title, bro. Uh, tell mom and dad I said, what's up, man. So. You got anything else, Josh? Thank you. I will. I will. Nah, man. Just congrats. I know you're going to be doing it up in at Indiana Tech soon. So, we going to be there Thank for you. that, too. <laughs> hey, bro. Not, the, not to keep gassing, bro, but you, man, you about to... You was you was steal, bro. You're just a steal. And I think Indiana Tech knows that. They, they yeah. know it. They, they know. know it. They and know. Uh, we know it. And I know you're about to about to kill down there. So mm -hmm. I yep. cannot wait. Yes, cannot sir. wait. Cannot wait. So yeah, man. Good luck the rest of the way this year, bro. Appreciate you spending some time with us, man. And um yeah, we yeah, love to yeah, have no, you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah. sir. We love to have you thank again. You. Definitely a friend of the show. But um yeah, man, that's sure. it. Man, I'll, that's come hey, I'll come for sure. That's another episode of What Are We Missing, man? Uh Wes, Josh, and Brady. Make sure you guys continue to share this episode out. Um, continue to join the movement. Appreciate everybody that's been listening since day one. Until next yep. time, peace.